Hello everyone, I'm CJ Whirlerman. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below and we kindly ask you please help keep our show going and growing by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ Whirlerman. Now let's get into it. In a moment, we will reveal why more American soldiers are converting to Islam. But I want to set this episode up with some important historical context, specifically in relation to the history of military warfare. You see, when Western historians talk about the greatest military leaders of all time, they point to Napoleon, Julius Caesar, and Alexander the Great, because these figures align with European-centric versions of history. But when you speak to modern-day military leaders and strategists, however, they will invoke a name most people in the Western world have never heard of. Khalid ibn al-Walid, a 7th century warrior whose accomplishments place him among the three greatest military records of all time, having led the Arab Muslim army in victory in more than 50 battles with one dozen of them being described as decisive or pivotal in the rise of the Islamic religion. Khalid ibn al-Walid Al-Walid was a companion of the Prophet Muhammad and one of the Islamic Empire's most capable military commanders. His leadership united Arabia under a single leader for the first time in history. He's known for commanding the forces of the Rashidun army under Muhammad and his successors of the Rashidun Caliphate. It's rumored that he fought in over 100 conflicts and skirmishes, but he's best remembered for 14 significant battles in which he remained undefeated against the Byzantine Empire and the Sassanid Persians and helped spread Islam to the greater Middle East. But what's most fascinating about Khalid is he once hated and killed Muslims and in fact fought alongside the pagan Meccans against Prophet Muhammad's Muslims during the famous Battle of the Trench in the year 625. Two years later, however, Khalid switches sides and converts to Islam, and he would lead the Muslim army to unifying Arabia for the first time in human history, a feat that neither the Romans, Persians, nor Ethiopians were able to accomplish. Admittedly, I only learned about Khalid recently, after a supporter and patron sent me his biography. But now I encourage every non-Muslim to learn about the life and times of Khalid al-Walid. Anyway, his biography got me thinking. It got me thinking about my career covering the so-called war on terror as a journalist. And it got me thinking about the many interviews I have conducted with victims of the US torture program in Afghanistan and Guantanamo Bay, and the American military personnel who watched over them. It makes me remember a guy named Terry Holbrooks. He became a Muslim in 2008 six years after he joined the US military to exact misplaced vengeance against Muslims for 9-11. We, uh, we flew to Ground Zero, so we could see Ground Zero that day. You know, it was the last thing we saw of America before we left was Ground Zero. I mean, they really drilled this, uh, this intense necessity of, of hate and anger towards these people. He was deployed to Guantanamo Bay, where the worst kinds of torture were inflicted upon more than 500 innocent Muslims who had nothing to do with Al-Qaeda or 9-11. But it was here that he found Islam. Um, and obviously, as time has shown, we've sent 550 of them home now, so they weren't guilty to begin with. They were always smiling. There, there must be something in your faith or in your life that, that's lacking in mine, because I'm here, and I'm not smiling every day, but you are. That, that's, that's amazing. You know, what do you have that I don't? You see, the thing about Islamophobia is it's rooted in unfamiliarity and geographical distance. Put simply, we are easily made afraid of things we have no personal experience with. So when the war on terror got underway, it was easy for the US government and media to whip up fear about the Muslim world, given an overwhelming majority of Americans don't even know a solitary Muslim person. This was certainly the case for Miles, a former US Marine who converted to Islam after serving two tours in Afghanistan. Well, then another perception is, you know, what Muslims are terrorists, that sort of deal. Well, people, people fear what they don't know. The majority of Americans don't have Muslim friends. They don't know anything about Ramadan or Nowruz or praying five times a day or whatever. What Americans see is in the news, is in the CNN. And they see, you know, this terrorist attack, this Muslim terrorist attack, this Muslim extremist, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, Islam makes up a billion people in the world, all right? So, what, one sixth? One seventh of the world is Muslim, and you're going to call that entire population terrorists? There are literally dozens, more likely hundreds of stories about American soldiers converting to Islam after being sent to Afghanistan to kill Muslims. Echoing the conversion story of the great Islamic warrior Khalid al Walid. 
Put simply, being exposed to the Muslim world, even in the heat of battle, is the fastest and surest way to unpack every single lie you've been fed about Islam in the media. So then I ended up joining the military. And once I joined the military, I was in the U.S. Army for a number of years and ended up deploying to Afghanistan to where I kind of learned a lot more about the culture of a Muslim. Um, didn't really dive into the Quran at all, but really learned what a Muslim was all about, their general lifestyle, out in, uh, out, at least out in the, um, in the uh, parts of uh, Kandahar, Afghanistan. And found some of the most peaceful people that I've ever met in my life. Definitely gave me a different view than what I had seen here in the West when it comes to different news channels and different things that are thought and, you know, stereotypes of Muslims. Uh, so learned that they were not exactly what I was taught. Okay, so what stands out from his testimony is the word peace. So let's think about that for a moment. He was sent to a Muslim country by an invading military force to kill what he had been told were threatening and violent locals, but only to discover they lived peacefully and in accordance with their religious faith, while his country was invading and bombing countries all around the world. It's this realization that has drawn so many current and former American servicemen and women to Islam. The very religion had been convinced the United States was at war against, like this US Marine sergeant who converted to Islam while serving in Iraq. Sean Blackwell is a former sergeant in the U.S. Army. In May 2003, a few months after the U.S. invasion of Iraq, he was on guard duty outside the health ministry in Baghdad. A young Iraqi woman approached him. She was looking for work. They got to talking. So I was like, hey, you have a girlfriend? Doesn't mean like I wanted to be his girlfriend or anything. I was just curious. And, uh, and he said, um, no. But if I'm going to be marrying some, I'll be marrying you. They kept meeting. Three months later, they decided to get married. Sean converted to Islam against his commander's wishes. Converting to Islam while fighting a war against a Muslim population on behalf of your imperialistic government is a paradox that could not be more stunning. When Islam rightfully claims to be the religion of peace, then these conversion stories must count as its best advertisement. But if you're looking for a story that will literally knock you down in amazement, then the story about Richard McKinney, a former US Marine who served in Somalia and Afghanistan, promises to leave you speechless. You see, he was so radicalized by anti-Muslim hate that he planned to bomb an Islamic center in Indiana. I had devised a plan, create my own IED, homemade bomb, and I was gonna set it off right outside the Muncie Islamic Center. 200 plus killed or injured. That was the plan. I saw an opportunity to do one last thing for my country. This was my rationale. I knew I would end up in a federal prison with a needle in my arm. I didn't care my hatred of Islam. It was the only thing that was keeping me alive. But a moment he shared with his young daughter made him rethink his plan. So he decided to give the local Muslim community one chance to prove that Islam isn't the violent religion he had been led to believe. So he visited a mosque he intended to bomb. So I went to the Islamic Center, see a gentleman in the shoe room taking off his shoes. He looks at me and he smiles. He said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I want you to teach me about Islam. So he went and he gave me a Quran. Read this, come back when you have questions. So I did. And I would see things in the book. I'd be like, there it is. I got him right there. Explain that to me. And they would. This was a, a kind of awakening. Long story short, eight weeks after that first day I stepped into the Islamic Center, I became a Muslim. Now here comes the kicker. Three years after converting to Islam, he became the president of the very same Islamic Center he had planned to attack in 2009. Now if you're thinking I've cherry picked a few select stories to paint a broader picture, then you'd be wrong. The internet is literally filled with similar convert stories and across multiple nationalities. You'll find British soldiers, Australian soldiers, and French soldiers converted to Islam during and after their deployments to Muslim lands. The epic story of Khalid bin Walid lives on. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash cjwellerman 
We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help, and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are, and stay blessed. Thank you.